And I'm usually studying low dimensional topology from viewpoint of singularity theory and vice versa. And this stable map is something in singularity theory, and the shadow is low dimensional topology. Ah, this is joint work with Yuya Koda in Hiroshima University. So this is a plan. First, I will explain what is shadow and what is stable map. Just I state the definition. And then uh, I introduce some observations due to Costantino and Dylan Thurston. And then finally, uh, I state the main results. So let's start shadow. So a polyhedron P is called almost special if it is locally homeomorphic to one of the following five models. So I think I should say simple. So this is simple polyhedron. But in the paper of Constantino and Thurston, they said it is almost special. So I don't know why. But anyhow, it's there the same. So this uh, intersection is called triple line. And this vertex is called true vertex. And in my case, uh, we consider polyhedron with boundary. So we also include these two models. So this is the boundary, and this is also boundary. Uh, but uh, we also assume bound the boundary consists of only circles, I mean, this union of circles. Therefore, we don't have this. We only have this. Okay. Now, yes, uh, decoration. So let P be an almost special polyhedron and assign one of the labels E and I and F to each connected component of the boundary of the polyhedron. So then, such a polyhedron with labels is called boundary decorated almost special polyhedron. So this is some picture of a uh, polyhedron, and uh, it has one, two, three boundary components. And then I label, say, E here, and I here, and F here, like that. Okay, now definition of shadow. So let M be uh, orientable, compact, uh, I always think orientable three manifold. Uh, M be uh, orientable, compact three manifold, possibly with torus boundaries. And A is a link in A. Then a boundary decorated almost special polyhedron P, properly embedded in a smooth four, orientable four dimensional manifold W, is called a shadow. Uh, if uh, it satisfies these three conditions. The first condition is W collapses onto P. So this is some picture. The so dimension is not good, but anyhow, this is some picture. And uh, here, uh, uh, this one is W. W is four-dimensional manifold. And P is two-dimensional object embedded in W. And this arrow means there yeah, is some collapsing to P. So this is the first so condition. And then the second condition is just locally flat, so it is embedded in, locally embedded in R3. And this is the main part. What is this dot? I don't know what is that. Ah, I have. Okay. So, so this means uh, M is this one, and L is this one. So M is three-dimensional manifold. So the condition is M is boundary of the four-dimensional manifold. But I exclude this one. So boundary PE, this means boundary of the polyhedron with label E. Then take the neighborhood of this simple closed curve in three-dimensional manifold. So this is a solid torus. Then take the interior and exclude it. And this means I think the exterior of this single closed curve. Therefore, this is label E. So in this picture, this is three-dimensional manifold, since it is a boundary. So here we have a simple closed curve, labeled E. Then I just remove this part. This is solid torus. So then uh, the condition is F is homeomorphic to this one. So this is label E. And for the link, so label, uh, boundary component of P with label I is also simple closed curves. And L is exactly correspond to this uh, simple closed curve. This is rather I. And excuse me. Uh, first, you give the structure of simple shell decomposition and then cross. A simple shell, simple shell. Yeah. To to W and P. 
First, we make a triangulation for W and P, and then crux. And then, uh, if I, I do nothing, it is just neighborhood is three torus, but uh, not doesn't correspond to three. So this is the definition of shadow. In, yeah. It's written in the paper of Constantino and Sasso. Then, so by theory of drive, so every uh, three dimensional manifold in this case has a shadow. So a tube neighborhood of each region, R of P, in W can be regarded as the dismantle over the region, as in this picture. So this is the region, and uh, since we have retraction, so uh, retraction collapsing, so therefore we can think this is over the uh, region. It is a kind of disk bundle. Then uh, we are interested in the boundary of W. Therefore, we see the boundary of disk bundle. So this is circle bundle. Then if it is circle bundle, so we have to think about the twisting. Uh, this is called Euler number. So then we say the Euler number uh, of this circle bundle uh, green. But in this case, uh, if we uh, carefully uh, check the framing, so say this is, suppose this is R, then we just follow this uh, triple line, then framing is given by the other two faces. And if you follow the other the two faces of the other side, sometimes you have maybe span. Sometimes onions, but sometimes maybe span. Then if it is maybe span, this Euler number has to be half integer. Therefore, green is given by half integer. But this definition is not so important in this talk. Just you can see it is uh, some kind of Euler number. Okay. Then so uh, try the construction. So Every manifold and link can be reconstructed from a shadow with information of green uniquely. So if you have polyhedron and on each face, if you have half integer, then you can uniquely recover, restore the manifold. Yes, this is the shadow. Okay, now I explain the stable map. So suppose M and N are smooth manifolds, and F is a smooth map from M to N. Dot. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, this is definition. definition. Uh, if it's called a stable map, if, ah, sorry, uh, first I explain this. So, if it's a map from M to N, and uh, G is a map from M to N. And assume there is a diffeomorphism from M to N, and also diffeomorphism from M to N, and suppose this commute. In that case, we say, F and G are left to right equivalent. So what does this, this mean? So up to diffeomorphism of source and target manifold, the two maps are the same. Okay. This is the definition of uh, left right equivalence. Then stable map is if there exists a neighborhood U of F in the space of maps. Uh, so I mean this is a space of maps with Hoytoni topology, then there is a point corresponding to the map, I mean there is a map, so point F, then this condition say here you have neighborhood of F such that for any map G in U, this map and this map are right left equivalent. I mean this map and this map are the same up to DPO morphism. So what, what I mean is, so if you perturb F in the space of map slightly, it doesn't change. This is the meaning of the state. So it is called stable map. Then there's the classification of stable map. Uh, I, from now, I assume M is three-dimensional manifold, and N is just Euclidean plane. Then there is classification, I think, due to mother. Uh, then there are four cases. This is just projection, so map is regular. And this is called uh, definite fold, because the second entry is definite fold. So this is called definite fold. Uh, it has singularity. And this is definite fold. And this case it is indefinite fold. And this is cast. But uh, in my talk, cast will not appear. 
because uh, in dimension three, we know the number of tasks is always even, and by continuous move of the map, smooth move of the map, we can always eliminate the tasks, so that there is no task. So by this reason, I just uh, uh, I don't consider this. So only these two singularities appear in my talk. Then this is uh, something slightly special. So I worry about, so I'm thinking the three manifold with torus boundary. So in this slide, I like to explain how to set the stable map on the boundary. So map is called S map. If it satisfies that, so the first condition is the stable map in the interior of the manifold. And the second condition is on the boundary, the map is projection. And the boundary is given by x equals 0. This is somehow vertical with respect to the projection. So boundary is here, and projection is just like that. So this is special con somehow special condition on the boundary, specific condition on the boundary. OK. Now I draw a picture. So this is definite form. So in this picture, this direction is U direction. Ah, maybe it's here, U direction. And this direction is X and Y frame. Okay. Then, so just uh, choose a small arc transverse to the singular set and consider the frame edge. Then uh, just take a point P, which corresponds to the second entry equal zero. So this frame edge is one point, of course. Then if you choose this part, so green one, then frame edge is this simple closed part, because this is circle, so this is frame edge. And if you go the other side, frame edge is nothing. Okay. This is definite fault. And here is a picture of indefinite fault. So um, again, I choose some uh, small interval here. Then frame edge of this point is just crossing. So just crossing. This uh, uh, follow from this equation. Then I assume the M is compact. Then of course phi by is compact. Therefore, this end point must come back some of them. But by the orientation reason. It cannot come back here. It is uh, forbidden by orientation. Therefore, it must come back here and here. So this is this picture. So this circle is not small. It's really grow. It goes somewhere in the manifold and come back. But I don't, I don't care. Just shape is this. Then frame edge of P is this eight shape. And if you take outside, so a green, then it is a simple closed curve. And if you take another point, the other point, then it becomes two copies of circles. This is a picture of indefinite fold. Ah, so then for the first coordinate, this is copy for, to the U direction. This is also copy to the U direction. So you have family of this pair of points like that. OK. Then it becomes much more, a little, little bit more complex. But this is the most important part. So in the case where the set of singular value has normal crossing. So here, before there's no such normal crossing. But here, now we have normal crossing. Ah, sorry. This is a set of singular values. Uh, if, then suppose it has normal crossing. Then there are three cases. The first case is most somehow obvious. So there are two frame edge. They are disjoint. So somehow nothing happened, just separated. But second case and third case, in some sense, they match in the middle. So for example, see this uh, singular value, then singular set is here. So this is normal crossing, I don't know, uh, individual fold, individual fold, and individual fold. But then this is a horizontal smoothing, and this becomes 
uh, crossing because it appear uh, arrive at here and then it becomes vertical smooth. So it changes. And also we can see the same phenomena in this direction. So this is picture. Uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, picture in that case. And we have another case. This is same. So we have two crossings. We connect. We taking orientation. Then we yeah, are same exactly the same. So this is uh, just a singular set. I mean indefinite fold. And this corresponds to the move uh, when we cross this singular set. So horizontal smoothing and crossing and vertical smoothing. Then, according to the uh, uh, textbook of Osamu Saiki, uh, as he in, the, in his textbook there's a list of notation of singular fibers, and he said this one is of type two two, and this one is of type two three. It's just a name. And I, in this talk, for convenience, I just say this is of type two, and this is of type three. Now I finish stable map. Okay. Then I introduce psychic theorem. So, so one of the aim of the study of topological mapping is to get the information of the source manifold from singularities of a smooth map. For example, in most theory, you have a most function, then uh, you can get the homology group from the most function. So this is information of the source manifold. And if you write three-dimensional manifold, so Higgler splitting is also a kind of most function. And if you give the information of most function more precisely, you can get Higgler type like that. But in this talk, I study not map from R, but a map from R2. Then see what happens. So there's a result of the psyche 96. The flows are equivalent. There exists a stable map without a singular fiber of type 2 and type 3, and also without task. If and only if M is a graph manifold. This is the result. So this means, in some sense, from stable map to the real plane, we can get, info get the information of a geometric structure of three-dimensional manifold, in some sense. So if you write Gromov norm, then we can say just so there, if uh, there is no singular fiber, if and only if, growth norm vanish. This is his result. Then natural question is, uh, is there any relation between the number of singular fibers and growth norm? So this is the topic in this talk. OK, before the section two, I need to introduce complexity of stable map. So to do it first, uh, this is some small definition. So let L be a link in M. And uh, a map from M to R2 is called a stable map of the pair of M and L. If it is S map, I mean in the interior, it is a stable, stable map. And on the boundary, it's just nice projection. And also, L is contained in the set of definite folds of F. So the picture of definite fold was like that. So definite fold is here, so image is here. Definite fold is here, and this is simple closed cup. If I, I assume there is no cusp, no cusp, then it is simple closed cup. Then L is contained in the set of definite fold. This is the definition of a stable map for the pair of manifold and link. Okay. Hmm? Sorry, I'm sorry. very sorry. <laughs> 2, 2, the number of singular fiber of type 2. So I, I, I denote 2, 2, F, the number of singular fiber of S, sorry, of F of type 2. And uh, 2, 3, F, the number of singular fiber of F of type 3. Then by this vertical line, I say the number of elements in the set. Then first define some complexity for a stable map. So the complexity of a stable map is the sum of the number of singular fiber of type 2 plus twice the number of singular fiber of type 3. I will say the reason why I need here 2. But this is not very important. So mainly we count the number of this singular fiber. Then for a pair of manifold and link, we define the stable map complexity to be the minimal value of the complexity of map for all stable map. 
for the pair. Okay. Then in this talk, I always write SMC, so stable map complexity. This finishes the first section. Now I introduce the result, not the result, observation, because the main part of this paper is somewhat different. Observation due to Constantine and Sanson. So in this talk, I need two their observations. First one is correspondence between Stein's factorization. I will uh, introduce the definition soon. Stein's factorization and so bracket, yeah, branch, yeah, anyhow, shadows. There is some good correspondence. This is the first thing. And the second thing is uh, construction, construction of neighborhood of singular fiber. Uh, in other words, construction of neighborhood of true vertex construction of a part of three manifold which corresponds to the uh, true vertex of the shadow. And we can realize it by growing two regular ideal octahedra. So this is also a key point when we calculate hyperbolic volume. So I introduced two of them. So now, Stein factorization. So suppose F is a stable map. For two points M, uh, X and Y in M, define an equivalence relation by this. So this means they are on the same fiber. And the second condition is they are on the same connected component on the fiber, of the fiber. Then, then we consider quotient space. And this is called the sign factorization of S. And for example, if you have fold, a definite fold singularity, so this is, I already explained. So Frame edge of point P is just one point. So therefore, we have one point here. Frame edge of green point is a simple closed curve. It's one third connected. Therefore, it corresponds to one point here. So totally, we have this shape. But the other side, frame edge of the other side, the other side was uh, empty. Therefore, we have nothing here. So we have kind of polyhedron here with bounds. This is a sign factorization of the definite force. Then, in the case of indefinite fault, so again, spring edge of P is just an uh, arc. Then here, we have a green point. Then it is a simple closed curve. Therefore, we have only one sheet. But in the other side, we have two simple closed curves. Therefore, we have two sheets. So science factorization of indefinite fault is something local, something like this picture. And I said branches because uh, automatically it has. So this is oriented. This map is oriented. Therefore, it somehow automatically have a branch structure. I will explain it later. But anyhow, you can guess what is the branch. Then what happened in the fiber two? So this is the picture. So this you have two connected components, but this still have singularity. So if we go this direction, so. Let's see the frame of this part. Then the smoothing is horizontal, like uh, in this picture. So we have three circles. Therefore, frame of this point is one to three sheet. And if you go this direction, then uh, this line is uh, singularity and this becomes vertical. So one of them becomes vertical smoothing. Therefore, it becomes two. And for to this direction, also two. And other direction, so just smooth this fiber vertical thing you have. One simple cross cut, this is one sheet. So this is the sign factorization of this picture, uh, of, of uh, type two. And only this is ex exceptional case. So here, the frame of this point is so horizontal smoothing. So we have two sheet and then one sheet and one sheet and the other side is vertical smoothing. So we have two sheet. But this is not almost special, because the neighborhood vertex is, is not true vertex. Therefore, this is uh, not shadow. Then, uh, sign factorization shadow. So we compare them. So I already explained the relation between this one and this, this one, this one. So just take our quotient to the connected component. We have this picture. On the, uh, on the other hand, so shadow, oh, 
at each point on the region, uh, regard, this is a shadow. Then, at each point on the region of shadow, the fiber is sad, because, as I said, it is sad band. So, three image of this point, I mean, as here you can see the trivalent graph with uh, red color. And three image of this point is, for example, this sack. And the three image of this point is this sack. I mean, in shadow, in the manifold of shadow. And the frame image of this end point is this sack. Okay. Then the frame image of this trivalent graph is uh, become a pair of parts. So between red and blue, you can see really, really small interval here, black interval here. Then the frame image of this black interval is interval times sad, so it is annulus. So you can see this annulus here between blue and red. And this will be important because this will become a cusp of the tetrahedral, octahedral. Then we go to the other side, then we have a pair of bands for blue, and the other side we have the same picture but upside down. This is uh, just we recover, we check it from shadow, just then we can get this picture. Okay. Ah, so this is what this is explanation for type two. And for type three, this is not shadow, I mean, this is not simple. And for the header, so we just uh, move it by entering hand from that side and that side, and then uh, this becomes like that. So it has two true vertices. Then we set the green here plus one, and then we don't change the ambient manifold. So in this sense, uh, so one thing. Uh, one uh, singular fiber of type 3 corresponds to two singular fiber of type 2. Therefore, in the definition of complexity of the stable map, uh, we uh, put 2 in the front of type 3. Only that's the that reason. Ah, now, the second part of the section 2. So, glue to ideal octahedral and make that make make this picture. So first you prepare two ideal, regular ideal of the header. And this one, and this one, and put it in a mirror image, and paint uh, like checkerboard. I paint it uh, in front, green, and uh, in the other side, blue, and green, and blue, and maybe light blue. Then for each pair, I just identify the faces. So topologically, there are two balls, and then connect four times. Then you have genus 300 body. But of course, we connect geometry, I mean, digitally. So let's see what happens. So as I explained in the previous picture, I grew green face to green face, and green face to green face. And I don't grew blue one and white little. Then, for example, just see the red one. So this edge and this edge are identified. And this edge and this edge are identified. And this edge and this edge are identified. So you have two hexagons and uh, you identify like that. You have pair of parts. This is this one. And if you see this cusp, so we identify this small interval with this one. And this small interval to this one. So it becomes annulus. Okay. So this corresponds to this white, white part. Then, then we have blue one, so this one, so exactly the same what I explained before. Okay. So now we could realize the genus 300 body using two regular ideal of time. Then, now, so this, this is shadow and uh, octahedra, and uh, this two regular ideal octahedra. So the, what is nice is if you have regular, regular ideal octahedra, if you see from the infinity, it is just a square. So if you have two copies of them, then you can glue easily by looking this square. So this is this picture. So you can glue them geometrically. 
Moreover, so this is a part of shadow, and this is triple line. And if you go triple line in this direction, then you may meet another true vertex. Then to this another true vertex, you also have a pair of regular ether octahedron. So same picture. Then, then I, I mean, the same picture is prepared neighbor, in the neighbor. But they, we can glue them canonically because this left face is really flat, and the other face is also really flat. So just glue them. So by this reason, what we can say is, let there be a shadow of M, and C is a number of uh, vertex, vertices of P. And the P prime is a neighborhood of the singular set of P in P. So just neighborhood of these singular sets. Then we regard it as a shadow. Then in, in the three manifold, this shadow corresponds to piece gluing these pieces. Okay. Then I say M prime. Then by this reason, we can say the volume of M prime is twice the number, no, sorry, uh, twice the number of vertices of P times volume of regular ideal octahedron. So we can precisely determine the volume to M prime. Okay, then Constantinus Sarson gave the upper bound, but this is an easy observation due to uh, hyperbolic plane field. So M is orientable to the manifold, possibly with torus boundary, and A is linked in M. Then define shadow complexity. So the minimal value of the number of CP, uh, uh, number of true vertex of uh, vertex of shadow P of this pair is called the shadow complexity of the pair and denoted by SC. So SC means shadow complexity. Then Constantino Sasson says, suppose L is empty. This is uh, not really this. I mean, they didn't treat the case when link exists. So exactly the same argument, we can say the same thing for the link. But anyhow, then growth norm is bounded by this. So what is that? If you move this one to this direction, then this is become hyper volume in some sense. Then you have two SCP. But this SCP is CP, minimal value of SCP. So uh, this is nothing but the, uh, sorry. This, from this equality, from this equality, you have uh, the equality here prime and this is equal. Here prime and equal. Then to get M, we need to apply hyper then filling, and this always decreases the volume, therefore we have this inequality. Now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now going to state the main result. So we have several observations. The first observation is uh, stable up complexity uh, is exactly the same as the shadow complexity. And the second one is uh, by using shadow, we can explicitly construct a stable map for in, from not dial, link dial in S3. And also we could make a kind of classification of hyperbolic, hyperbolic link with complexity map. A set, yeah. a set of orientation on each region of an almost special polyhedron P is called branching if it satisfies the following. So for each interior H of P, only two of three regions adapt to E in this same orientation. So, mm -hmm. so if you have polyhedral lines, so this is a picture of branching. So if you have this picture, so maybe canonically you oriented like this and like this and like this. Then just see this edge. So from uh, this face, you have this orientation. And from this face, you have this orientation. But from this face, you have opposite orientation. So the condition is exactly the same. You have this kind of picture. So therefore, it is called branch, a branch. Then, as before, we define the number of true vertex of branched shadow. Uh, uh, we say, uh, okay. minimal value of the number of uh, vertices of branched shadow is called the branched shadow complexity. And uh, we denote 
BSC. This is something in the theory. Most of, I think, most almost same as shadow complexity, but uh, we don't know. If uh, I think that there is more difference. Then main theorem is this. One. So SMC equal BSC. So S M C M and B S C M. Mm, this is easy. This is easy direction. Because suppose you have a stable map, you consider sign factorization. Then if there is a singular harbor of type 3, you just shift it, then you have a shadow. Therefore, from this, you can always make shadow. So this proof, this inequality. So this is just a, a, a corollary, or just a corollary of the uh, Constantino and Sass. And the other direction is uh, not obvious. What we have to do is, from a shadow, we have to make smooth map, I mean stable map, whose sign factorization is this shadow. And this is impossible. What we do is, from a shadow, we modify it without changing three manifold and without changing number of vertex, such that there exists a stable map whose sign factorization is that shadow. Okay, so we need to modify it for it, otherwise it is impossible. But actually, uh, uh, we can do it, so then we have this theory. Then corollary, this is the same as uh, I showed in the chapter two. So by the same other observation, we have this inequality. So I mean, I just say this is just hyperplane filling. So norm, norm is uh, bounded above by this one. And uh, by the main theorem, we can say stable map complexity and the shadow complexity is the same. So we have this inequality. So this answer one part of the question. So the number of singular fiber estimates the Gromov norm, norm from top. The four lower bound, we use as some uh, known inequality. But uh, before that, I need some uh, definition. So if the interior of each region of an almost special polyhedron P is an open disk, then it is called special polyhedron. Okay. Then uh, the theorem says, let M be an orientable closed three manifold, and P is a special shadow of M. So shadow, but satisfy this condition. Then, Edwin, I will explain this uh, in the next slide. So it's something, uh, yeah, something is more than two pi, then, then M becomes hyperbolic and uh, satisfies these inequalities. So here you can see SMC and this SMC, and this is a hyperbolic volume. So this, if we can choose this enemy, really, we can find an example. This enemy is really high. So if this is really high, this becomes almost zero, then this time becomes almost one, then there's no difference between this one and this one. Okay. The enemy is just a, a slow place, because I want to apply two by zero. So recall that M prime is a three manifold whose shadow is a neighborhood of the regular set of P in P, and it can be obtained by gluing two CP, so that's number of true vertex, two CP regular ideal of the header. So by construction, M is of the, so, uh, here I assume that the region is a disk, because it is, I said it is special. Therefore, uh, the frame age of disk is just uh, disk times S1, so this is three torus. So the operation to obtain M from M prime is adding three torus. So this is game free. So M, M is obtained from, from M prime by applying game free corresponding to disk regions. Then to this game free, so uh, we check the frame age of the meridian, uh, frame image, image, image of the meridian of the three torus on this picture. So here you have some plane and with uh, Euclidean metric and uh, the, this is closed and closed then it becomes torus. This is become flat torus. 
And then drainage of Merina is simple closed curve on this torus. Then we just measure the length of this simple closed curve. Then minimal number of this length. So we have several boundary components. Then to each boundary component, we may apply density. So then we take the minimal value of this length. So this is the element in the previous slide. Okay. Then from the shadow, we can easily calculate uh, the, this, we say, slope length. So slope length, just twice the green and square plus KR. So GR is green on the region, and KR is the number of vertices of P, which we meet when we go around once along the boundary. So here, you have a disk, and we go around the boundary of the disk, then sometimes we meet vertices. Just count how many times I meet. Then take square and square and root, then minimum. Then this is the element. So uh, what I want to say is, therefore, if you choose green very high, then you can make it very big, always. OK. Now I will go back to the uh, theorem. This is the same uh, slide. So if uh, this element is more than 2 pi, then we have this inequality. Then uh, by Gromov, uh, m is hyperbolic uh, because uh, yeah, it is known. If uh, this slope length is more than 2 pi, then again, we have hyperbolic manifold. It is by Gromov and Sunstone. And then this is called 2 pi cell. And therefore, it is hyperbolic. And uh, this inequality is, I already explained. This is due to Constantine and Sunstone. And this inequality is just definition of SMC. Yes, of course, this is minimum, so this is less than this one. And this inequality is uh, the middle one is due to uh, Futa, Harasaki, Ani, and Parcel. This, this is, is, I mean, they uh, check the 2 pi theorem more carefully and uh, study how volume changes. Then they can get a lower bound. OK, then I, yeah, I have some for me, so I explain what we can say more. So for example, since we have a shadow and there is good algorithm to make shadow from link diagram, we can make easily stable map using shadow. So it is link in S3, and there exists a stable map which satisfies the following conditions. So first, it is contracted, because I first prepare a disk and describe a link diagram and at some faces like this, then it is shadow. Therefore, it contracts, contracts, retracts, retracts to the disk. So it, it, it is contracted. And the number of similar fiber of type 2 is at most the crossing number of L minus 2. So we have this knot diagram. This is figure 8 knot. And we make shadow. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4 true vertices. But we collapse it from outside. So as I said, here we have this, and we collapse polyhedron from the boundary of the disk. Then this true vertex and this true vertex will disappear. Therefore, in this case, we only have two singular fiber of type 2. And of course, there's no singular fiber of type 3 and no cusp. So this is a real economic. Uh, there, there are some previously known results about it, but uh, the number of singular fiber is really small in this example, uh, in this case, uh, no, in our construction. And then we try to understand what is the SMC equal 1, uh, because the, what I want to know is, so suppose uh, you have torus knot, then we don't need singular fiber of type 2, because it is grass manifold. Then the question for me is, what happened for figure 8 knot? If I need only one singular fiber, or I need two singular fibers. So therefore, I want, we want to check what happened for SMC equal 1. Then, uh, assume it is hyperbolic. Otherwise, uh, it can be cabling, then it becomes complicated. So then, uh, its complement is homeomorphic to one of the following or Dane filling. I mean, there are several connected components, then I apply Dane filling. I don't know if it becomes a link complement in S3 or not. This we are cheating. Just, we don't know. But uh, anyhow, if it becomes S3, then that's all. And conversely, 
because these satisfy the function. It's a kind of classification. Okay, now figure eight. Then the figure not complement ha complement has a stable map with one singular fiber of type two in this position. And no other singular fiber, no cusp. And the position is described in this picture, yes. And since so stable map complexity is zero by psyche if and only if it is graph manifold. And figure eight not complement is hyperbolic. Therefore, uh, we can determine the complexity is one. Okay, I finish. So this is the last slide. This is another application. So suppose M is a uh, M is a orientable closed three manifold, and P is a branched special shadow of M. Then this element, this is uh, slope length of the N surgery, is more than this value. If it's satisfied, then we can have this equal. So stable com uh, shadow complexity and grand shadow complexity and stable map complexity coincide and given by the number of true vertex of this polyhedron. Okay. So the reason is somehow easy. So we get this inequality. So then check the difference of the left hand side and right hand side. Then if this is length, this uh, length is less than two times of V of, since I use the fact this is integer and this is also integer. So if this difference is less than two times V of, then since it is integer, we have no choice. Only there's only one integer in this interval. Then, uh, and this inequality is satisfied not only for SMC, but also BSC and SC also. We can get always this inequality. Therefore, under this assumption, we can say all integers coincide. So this is the equality. So this is, uh, at least for me, a little bit surprising because uh, usually it is difficult to determine complexity. Usually, lower bound is really difficult. However, this theorem says if we choose uh, this L, not B, not really B, right? So suppose you have some polyhedron, so shadow and say green is more than this one, then you have some three division manifold. Then immediately we can say the complexity is this one. And we can determine infinitely many, it, determine it for in, infinitely many three manifolds. This is the result. Okay, I stop here, thank you.